Wi-Fi Sheep would like to say a huge thank you to all of you that kindly support us. Help us continue to bring new videos like this. Join patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep from just $1 a month. Hello, good evening and welcome back to youtube.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep with me, Tom. And very late breaking news, as in two days behind this actually happening, but the announcement of the Raspberry Pi 500 Plus, brand new all-in-one wedge-shaped computer product from, I say the Raspberry Pi Foundation, it isn't, it's from the Raspberry Pi Commercial Holdings Company, but it's from Raspberry Pi. Now, for those of you that might be joining me for the first time, hello and welcome to Wi-Fi Sheep. And for those of you that have the attention span of a goldfish and are just looking for an instant answer, here it is. Raspberry Pi 500 Plus, no. Good night, everyone. For those of you that uh, would like to stick around for a more detailed explanation as to why I'm saying no and what's wrong with Raspberry Pi 500 Plus, well, how can I put this? Um... I saw this two days ago, so I've been very busy with work, so I've only just got around to uh, making this video. So this is two days later, this is Saturday, um, Saturday the 27th of October 2025 when I'm making this video. Uh, it's also given me two days literally to kind of think about it and come back with something remotely intelligent to say. Um, the 500 Plus, by the way, if you've not seen it, uh, let me just show you it. So this is on the raspberrypi.com website. And if you scroll down, it's here. And they're branding it as the ultimate all-in-one Raspberry Pi computer. So here we go. Um, so fundamentally, uh, I don't dislike this product, which might shock some people. I'm certainly not looking to hate on Raspberry Pi for the sake of it uh, hate is a very strong word and i don't hate this product honestly but when i looked at it and i looked at the specs and i thought the specs aren't bad for what it is and basically for the all-in-one wedge computers it now has uh, sort of keys that can be pulled off as a, a full mechanical keyboard because that was one pet gripe with the 400 and the 500, which was the keyboard on it, was not great. Um, the Val included solid state drive. Uh, that was another gripe when 500 came out. I said I wasn't really that impressed with 500 because, you know, why didn't it include solid state? And um, yeah, and people going, oh, wow, that's amazing. Yes, 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 yes. But there is one problem, which is the cost. If we go over to the Pi Hut, this is the UK store, so we're going to deal in pounds sterling. Rosie Pi 500 Plus, it's still in stock. They've not sold out either of the US or the UK variant. £172.80 just for the base computer system. Including that, that's value-added tax, but not including postage or carriage. And that doesn't include the power supply. Or the mouse they are going to do i have it here a kit which is 192 pounds so by the time you've added postage that's going to get up to 200 pounds which is going to be about 220 dollars that's really expensive also my pet gripe it still uses these damn micro hdmi ports which as you know ever since raspberry pi 4 came out i have hated those things and i <sighs> Who is this product for? Because it's extraordinarily expensive for what it is. And to case in the point, I had a quick look on Amazon at mini PCs. This is Amazon UK. And look here. I know it's under offer and I know it's been slightly reduced from £200. But look here. Right. The first one. Let's just go to this one. OK. I'm not sponsored, but let's just have a look at it. OK. And Windows 11 Pro. Intel x86 modern PC 260 gigahertz 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes M2 solid state drive 4k video output Windows compatible Intel PC 
And look, full size display port and HDMI on the back. And you get every you get the power supply, you get everything with that. So you just have to add a keyboard and away you go. Keyboard and monitor, obviously. Right? Bear in mind this is the price, £149. Let's go and just take another look at the stock RC Pi unit. So ARM based, so even if you were trying to be a desktop computer user, it doesn't work because people will want to run Windows and run Office. That's what most people want desktop computers for. Um, ironically, yes, the Raspberry Pi 4 and 5, 500 can run a version of Windows 11, but it's not an easy way to do it. It is a lot of fiddling around. We've done it here on the channel. So 16 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabyte solid state hard drive or storage just bear that in mind and what was that one again 60 gigabyte, 16 gigabytes of ram 512 solid state so oh so it has got the speed somewhere in this i forget when i've got the there we are 2.4 gigahertz processor arm cortex and the Intel is running at 3.6 gig. So basically you could buy a cheaper mini PC with a higher spec than, I can find it, there we are, than this new Raspberry Pi system. And there is the problem. And that's why, regardless to how good or bad this system is, I don't dislike it as a product, but I don't see who's actually going to buy this because you know retro computer users that want to run an emulator and want a sort of mechanical wedge the other issue is if you're willing to kind of do a little bit of bodging together yourself which not everyone will be but if you are then um i'll show you this so this is actually the mechanical keyboard it's a proper mechanical keyboard it lights up you can program it to light up just on the keyboard itself um this is actually attached to the machine that's doing the um streaming at the minute but you know I can take I can take the keys off. I could change the keys. It's a proper mechanical key switch keyboard. And that was what? It wasn't even £20. I think it's about £19 for this brand new. You know, it's a proper metal chassis keyboard. So do you get what I'm saying? It just seems massively overpriced. So it's certainly not for it's computer enthusiasts in their 40s, 50s, possibly 60s with money. Um, if you want a, 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 a mini PC to do things, you can buy, as I've just shown you, off Amazon, a brand new mini PC that's cheaper and higher spec than the Raspberry Pi 500 Plus, and it will run Windows, and it will run most, if not all, of your native PC software. Another point I just want to make, if I may, and I must remember to put my escape key back on the keyboard, but I want to show you this. This is an original Element 14 Raspberry Pi Model A from 2011-2012. So that is an original. In this box I have an original Raspberry Pi Model B. Both these systems came out together back in 2011-2012. The Raspberry Pi Model A was a cut-down version of the Model B, a slightly cheaper, more accessible cut-down version of the Model B. So the Model B originally had I believe it was 512 megabytes of RAM. I think some of them did have 256 to start with. And the Model A's started at 128, and I think they jumped up to 256 megabytes of RAM. But basically it was always half the RAM of the Model B. You also didn't have the Ethernet networking populated, and you also had just a single, a single USB as opposed to the double on the original 
Model B. The reason for me showing you these two, I suppose now, collector's items, and these are actually both uh, early 2011 versions, I think this one may be a 2012. The reason I'm showing you this is the original idea of the Raspberry Pi was they followed the BBC Micro, they had a cheaper cut down Model A, and they had a Model B. So my question to you, and mainly to Raspberry Pi, is this, is if you're going to do this with the Pi 500, why not offer us a slightly cheaper version? Because that's too expensive anyway, by the way. I might have got to 100 and... I don't know, 120, 125 maybe. But 172.80 is just too expensive. But why not do a Model A and a Model B? Why not take the SSD out or allow us to upgrade and put our own SSDs in? Bring the cost down so it still boots off S uh, micro SD card, for example, uh, and sort of do a you know a slightly cost reduced version. I also hope that this kind of faddy uh, rainbow LED light up keyboardy thing. I hope that's not adding huge amounts to the price because personally I'm not a fan of gimmicks like that. This keyboard here does this whole light up rainbow thing. It's just set for default red at the minute, but it can do all sorts of fancy things. But it's not something... I didn't buy this keyboard for the fact it lights up. I bought it because I wanted a, a nice mechanical keyboard, uh, which I've ended up using with my streaming and recording PC, hence why it's in use right now. But, you know, it's just... It's gimmicks that I think we're paying through the nose for. And, yeah, I, I just... I, I don't really understand who this product is for. And it's it's interesting that I took issue with the original uh, Raspberry Pi 500 because I didn't really see, other than a small upgrade on the 400, it didn't really do anything that you know we want. They finally do a product that you think, yeah, okay, mechanical keyboard, that's interesting. Solid state uh, storage, yes, that's where the Pi really needs to be. I don't dislike it as a product, but then the price is for the specs is just ridiculous. So I, I, I'm at a loss. So that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. Um, what I will say is, and this is not, you know, a, a hate speech against the Raspberry Pi. I, I love Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi has been a big part of my life. And I'm still, even now, this is something I bought literally the other day. I'm actually at the moment slightly guilty of attempting to stockpile first generation Raspberry Pi Zeros. I know there's the Zero 2 and there's all sorts of other versions including the uh, Zero W with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth etc. At the moment I actually need a project that actually needs the original board. So it's the same processor set as this one assuming that's a 512 megabytes. It's 512 megabytes single core ARM 32 bit. Um, and I'm I'm really fearful that they're going to stop making these at some point. And you're still restricted to, to one per purchase. So I'm having to buy them one at a time and pay postage and duty and carriage, which is a nightmare. Uh, so I'm trying to collect as many of these for future projects. I've also literally just the other day as well picked up this off eBay. You can now get the originals with their sort of half cases. That might break if I try and get that off. But there is another Model B. It's a slightly later revision model B in there with a case and you can pick up these used and this actually works perfectly fine and you can pick those up relatively cheap. Again, it's all part of what I'm actually doing myself at the moment. I guess what I'm trying to get at is I'm not against new Raspberry Pis happening and there will be some functions and, and projects and features, especially if you want to run uh, local AI, for example, where we are going to need the processing power of a Pi 5. And I'm curiously interested to see what a Pi 6 is going to look like. But I'm also aware that Raspberry Pi was meant to be a lower end, cheap computing platform. And we are now spiraling into the world of mini PCs in a price point. In fact, we're now going past the point of mini PCs. And that for me is a huge problem. As I've said, I'm pleased that they're still making or you can still get hold of the cheaper and lower end Raspberry Pi so you know it's not all obviously doom and gloom but um, yeah I'm just completely lost for this one in all honesty. So to wrap this up then um, Raspberry Pi 500 plus I like it as a concept and I really wish I could say oh yeah great but again 
unfortunately at that price i'm not going to buy one I might pick one up second hand or something in the near future, but I'm I'm not going to buy one at the price point. It's simply too expensive for what it is, which is a real, real shame. I think Raspberry Pi need to understand that they're not Apple and they didn't come from the same place as Apple. Raspberry Pi, as we all know the history, was set up to basically launch or relaunch the whole idea of the kind of hacker community young educator uh, school child you know interest in electronics and computing and it was great and it was wonderful and i wish we were still in that place now i know things change i know it's been over a decade now and a lot has happened but that's where raspberry pi came from that's why when they start doing other things like this that you know i don't really seem to gel that well they are they have an extra element of responsibility more than a generic commercial company or you know a Chinese clone manufacturer would have and that's why I'm probably more um, scrutineering or skeptical of them as opposed to a normal generic manufacturer and as I said Raspberry Pi you're not Apple so stop trying to be Apple because you are not and you can't do the same model of high-end high price selling on the idea of a logo and a badge because underneath you know your operating system isn't really there the products they are made out of cheap parts but let's not forget that but these are not premium components in a Raspberry Pi product and also you rely heavily on the open source community for your software and the problem is now that if you want to be like a desktop pc well a desktop pc a mini pc can do most if not more than what a Raspberry Pi can do even the high-end Raspberry Pi um, can either do it either a lot better or in some cases can do stuff that the Pi can't do um, and we're talking in a, a desktop space so you know that's basically where the problem is and I know many other people have commented about exactly the same I'll just leave you on one final thought which is does it run or can it run Risk OS no it can't Risk OS is very much at the moment stuck in the 32-bit era so the last Raspberry Pi boards that could run that operating system natively was the Raspberry Pi 4 and Raspberry Pi 400. What I will say is if you run the latest Raspbian Linux distribution you can probably run uh, RPC EMU the RISC OS or RISC PC emulator perfectly happily uh, that will work perfectly well and if anything ironically it might actually have better compatibility with Acorn and RiskOS software than trying to run RiskOS 5 Pi natively. Anyway, that's just something to uh, think about. So if you haven't done so already, please do consider liking and subscribing. Thank you once again to all our brilliant Patreon backers and YouTube channel members. There they are on the screen now. Thanks once again, everyone. Really appreciate it. I'll be back with some more content. We've got a number of other projects and we've got a couple of shows coming up. So do stay tuned right here to the channel. Thanks so much for your company once again, and I'll see you real soon. Until next time, bye for now.